My mama lost her job, so I have to babysit while she's out looking for a new gig. But the principal said you can't miss no more school. I ain't got a choice. It's gonna be off us to see each other now. Is there anything I can do to help your mom? No, no. She'll be pissed if she finds out I told somebody. For those of you that said episode seven was going to be when Keisha got her freedom. We're going to give you guys a round of applause. We reported that first on this channel and what happened happened. We're going to discuss it right now. And let me just say this to pay or wait, you cheater. This chick had a video up about a review of episode seven last night at like 1.30 p 1.30 AM in the morning, man. My God, can't nobody keep up with that. This is going to be my episode seven, Shy, season three review, top five WTF moments and storylines. Let's jump into it. If you're finding me for the first time, please subscribe to the channel. Be sure to turn on notifications so when I drop videos, you get them. Follow me live tomorrow night. I'll be going live with Larry and Sharonda from Pair Weight to recap episode seven of The Shy. And we're going to also recap... P Valley, episode four. That was going to be good. My number four WTF moment. My Isha mom loses her job. She tells Papa and doesn't want Papa to tell anybody else. Well, you know, Papa's a caring dude. He's going to tell it. The big reveal from this was initially I was under the assumption his daddy was somewhat crooked. And turns out, ladies and gentlemen, his dad is a role model. However, the dad know that that was dirty money he took from Camille. Even though he knows that's dirty money, he's not doing anything dirty with the money. He is giving the money to Maisha's mom who lost her job after Papa gave a compelling speech. I mean, Papa went in there and said, I've got all my needs taken care of. What are we going to do with this money? Not only does he give up the money, but he goes to Maisha's mom's house to hand deliver the money, give her a word of God. And even though she didn't want the money, which sometimes black folks, you got to swallow that pride. Everybody at some point in time in their life needs help. And it ain't no point in you being prideful about getting a little help. Think about how this country was built. This country got help from African Americans, even though it was forced help. But she took the help. And he was going to leave the money there whether she wanted it or not. And I just say, you know what? He is a good, he's a good guy. And I'm glad my Isha didn't catch some crazy attitude with Papa because he was trying to help. My number four WTF moment, it involved Emmett's mom and Rico Suave. And y'all know I've been after him since before this season started. Okay. So, you know, he about to smash with Emmett's mom. They go in the house and, you know, Emmett... And Tiff is there. And the mom's just like, what the hell y'all doing here? Well, for one, whenever you have someone in your home that you're leaving in there to do what they want to do, you can't never tell when they're home and when they're not. Just because you expect them to be gone doesn't mean that they're going to be gone. So they're in there. She's hot because, you know, her little panties is soaking wet because she want Rico Suave to get all up in there. And though she has a little issue with them being in there. Rico Suave and her go back outside. This was the most telling issue of this story because I'm telling y'all, you cannot trust Rico Suave. He is riding her back about getting those kids out of the house. Now, granted, what he's saying is right. He's not the right messenger. Hell, you only known this woman a month and a half and you already trying to get the kids out the house. What are your motives? The way he was adamant about her getting those kids out of the house tells me, do you need somewhere to live? Are you trying to plant your roots in her crib? What do you want, Rico Suave? I don't know what he wants. I guess we'll find out over the course of this season into next season, but I don't trust Rico Suave. Number three WTF moment involves Emmett and Don. And at the end, Emmett and Don smashed. After last week, Emmett just told Tiff he didn't want nobody else. And the storyline with them was, uh-oh, hold on. Sorry about that. Y'all know we got that newborn in here. But anyway, Emmett and Dom smashed. And not only did they smash, they got excited because we learned Little Rail really owns 
not only the building, but he owns the business Sonny is in, and he's just lending Sonny his own name. Sonny is just a cook for him. So Little Rail is going to kick out Sonny, let Dom and Emmett take over for a couple of months to see how things go. And from that, you know, they drinking a little wine, they feeling good, and she basically offered him some pity pussy. However, it turns into... I'm going to smash you without a condom. Ladies and gentlemen, there are so many issues that might go wrong with this. We already know Emmett got like 4,900 kids running around on the street. And you smash this woman in the restaurant on the table without a condom. I don't see how this is good. This could be the way they're going to keep Lala's character on the show for seasons to come because she could be that crazy baby mama if they have kids. Be on the lookout for that. But the other thing I do know, sometimes it doesn't work out when you smash someone who's your business partner. They're not married. They don't have a history with each other. They haven't been together that long. And you're smashing before you even get into the business. And let alone, you smash without a condom. You got a, you got, you're living with your baby mama. You're living in your, with your baby mama in your mama's house, Emmett. You got to be better than that, brother. You want to get them chips the way you claim you got to make better decisions than that. My number two, WTF moment and storyline. Duda is endorsed by Gemma's daddy over Camille being played by Lena Waithe. And we find out Gemma's father's backstory. He's got banker's money. His family was bankers. They had the first black bank in Chicago that eventually got closed down. And he is one of the best philanthropists in the city that all the black candidates come to. And when he gives the endorsement, that's who they roll with. Well, in this particular episode, he gave his endorsement to Duda because he sees himself in Duda and Duda's a man, even though Lena Waithe's character is playing a man, she's really not a man, which he highlighted in essence. And then Lena Waithe gave a very non-compelling speech. I wasn't moved by her speech. Um, I, I feel what she was trying to say, but it wasn't moving. She didn't, I didn't get the same feel I get from Barack Obama when he gives a speech or the same feel I get from Michelle Obama when she gets a speech. And I guess this is just her basically writing herself out of the storyline, but it wouldn't surprise me if she comes back somehow, some way to haunt Duda. We've learned in this episode that the reason Duda had issues with Candy it's because Candy smashed his secretary. Could we see a situation where Candy might be getting up with Lena Waithe's character? Because when they was walking back there to talk to Gemma's daddy, Lena Waithe was already saying, you see how your wife is looking at me. It could be something like that. Or it could be a situation where as Duda has continuously gotten on Candy's nerves, she might jump ship from him, jump on the ship with can, um, Lena Waithe's character and help her become mayor somehow, some way, even though Gemma's daddy is going to endorse Duda. I don't think we've seen the last of Lena Waithe's character. We'll just have to see. Number one WTF moment. <laughs> Of course, Keisha getting her freedom, thanks in part to Ronnie. But I just got to say this about Ronnie. Ronnie, if you're going to be a black superhero, yes, we're happy that you found Keisha and you got the door open. But you can't get your ass beat, man. You can't get hit on the head and be on the ground. Bro, you've got to literally hit homeboy, get her out of there, and then get your black superhero music playing behind you in the background. Nonetheless, he did figure out where she was at, got the door open, and I was about to get mad at Keisha because in the very beginning, when Homeboy jumped in there, she had an opportunity she could have ran out the door. But she decided to jump on his back, scratch his eyes. I don't necessarily think she done that to help Ronnie as much as she was angry. In the end, she picked up that crowbar and she went to town on brother at first, in, earlier in the episode, we was mad when she had that chair stick and she hit him and ain't do nothing. We was like, you can't hit harder than that. But hey, she got him good and he just took it. But in this particular scene, 
She went to town with the crowbar, and in the very last hit, I heard splattering of blood. I heard gashing of skin. I think she got him good, and she might have killed him. But what I want to say to Chicago PD, don't be coming for this girl. She was trying to get her freedom. We know how y'all will behave when there's some black folks involved sometimes. Y'all will be trying to say she ain't had to kill him. This man held her captive for two months. She seen the opportunity to get out of there, and she done better this time. So, you know, Keisha redeemed herself on that. Her and Ronnie both wind up at the hospital. Kevin is called from his event of about to smash Gemma, and the daddy came in there and caught and bust all that up and was down there about to interrogate Kevin. He makes it to the hospital. Dre is at the hospital. The mom is at the hospital. It's a very, very... Um, Humbling moment, a sad moment. They're reunited. It was probably emotional for a lot of you all to see them reconnected. I like the way this episode went, but now it leaves a lot of questions. Is Ronnie going to get out the hospital and then go with his homeboys and take that job? Is this going to be the last season we see Ronnie? Because he's basically resurrected himself. When word gets on the street that Ronnie found Keisha, basically saved her, um, he's going to be a new man. He might can take up roots in the community, but why would he? I mean, at this point in time, bro, just go start your life. You, you've in, not necessarily right the sin you did, but you made the situation a little better. And in the very end, you've seen Kevin come in the room to thank Ronnie. And I think that could be closing the door on this chapter with Ronnie. But leave me all your comments, ladies and gentlemen. Really, really great episode. Now we're going to have to deal with Keisha and whatever mental issues she's going to have. That poor girl. She's played the hell out of her role. So has her mom. Her mom has really played the hell out the role this season. Um, what are we going to talk about for the last two episodes? We'll have to come up with something. And you know we'll keep you guys posted. That's going to do it for this video. Don't forget to like the video. Comment. Subscribe. Get yourself that life gain. Follow me, Larry, and Sharonda from Paraweight. As we go live Monday night, me and Larry go live every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday night. And on Wednesdays and Fridays, we do talk about movies and TV shows. We do Marvel. And we're going to start taking phone calls for stocks. So people that want to call in, talk a little bit about the stocks and things they're investing in, we're going to start taking phone calls for that on Wednesday. So tune in. And until that next Sex is Hell video, I'll see you.